and users worldwide, we gather valuable insights that shape our direction and help us focus on areas that have the most significant um, impact on knowledge accessibility and sharing. So um, our annual planning process plays a crucial role in translating the broader movement strategy into actionable plans for each year. So the annual plan sets specific targets and objectives that align with our strategic goals, enabling us to allocate resources efficiently and prioritize initiatives that contribute most effectively to the growth and sustainability of our projects. When it comes to feedback from our users and um, community, the heart of Wikimedia lies in our vibrant community of editors, readers, and contributors. Their feedback is a constant source of inspiration and valuable input. We active feedback through various channels. Let's check them. Next slide, please. Such as our mobile support emails. So you feel free to connect with us through our dedicated mobile support emails, especially designed to cater to your inquiries and concerns. Whether you are encountering technical glitches or seeking um, assistance with app functionalities, our team is ready to provide remote and personalized help to ensure a seamless experience. Next slide. The feedback that we receive through our feedback loop page on MediaWiki. So we value your input. Visit our feedback loop page on MediaWiki and you can share your thoughts, suggestions, and any issues you have encountered while using our Wikipedia apps. Your feedback plays a crucial role in enhancing the user experience and we're committed to actively listening um, and responding to your insight to continually improve our apps. Next slide, please. Newsletter and office hours. So you can stay updated and engaged with our community through our newsletters, where we share exciting updates, um, featured releases, and even insights into our development process. Additionally, um, join our regular office hours sessions where you can directly interact with our team, ask questions, and discuss ideas. We believe in fostering an open and collaborative environment, and these platforms are designed to facilitate a meaningful interactions with our users. Next slide, please. When it comes to our team heuristics, our apps team uh, operates on a set of guiding principles that shape our decision making and collaborations. So there are some heuristics that we develop within the team in order to think of what's the best to bring into the app. So the first important element is mobile first. So the core of our approach lies in a mobile first mentality. We design and develop with a mobile user at forefront. So recognizing the growing significance of mobile devices as primary access points of information. This strategy ensures that our apps provide a seamless and optimized experience for users on smartphones and tablets even. So that if we are doing a new feature, that it will be in a way that makes sense to the app users. The second point is experience continuity. So seamless user experiences are paramount, whether transitioning between devices or engaging with our apps across various platforms. We prioritize maintaining a constant and initiative experience. And this empowers users to effortlessly interact with our content, regardless uh, of their chosen access point and device. The next point is accessibility. So um, inclusivity drives our development efforts. We're committed to ensuring that our apps are accessible to users of all abilities, including low vision users and multi-language users who switch between languages for reading and editing. We also consider users with unstable internet connections tailoring the experience accordingly. We invite you to engage with our open source code base and contribute. We're striving to create an inclusive environment that promotes equal access to, to knowledge for, for everyone. So personalization and customization. Recognizing the diversity of user preference, 
we're working towards enhancing personalization and customization options within our apps. So empowering users to tailor their experience allows them to engage with the content in ways that resonate with their individual needs and interests. And when it comes to innovation, innovation propels our journey forward. We're committed to staying at the cutting edge of technology, even new trends, exploring new features, design concepts, and approaches to enriching our interactions. Our main commitment to innovation ensures that we continuously evolve to meet the changing landscape of user expectations. And um, finally, safety. So safety is non-negotiable. We employ um, robust measures to safeguard the user data and privacy, as well as to mitigate risks associated with the misinformation and harmful, harmful content. So by staying um, proactive, we create an environment where users can explore and contribute to knowledge with confidence. Next slide, please. And here we go with um, level, a level of effort versus impact. So balancing um, effort and impact is fundamental considering in our decision making. We evaluate potential um, initiatives based on their potential positive outcomes relative to the resources required and that we have. So this approach allows us to allocate our efforts effectively and focus on projects that offer the most um, substantial benefit to our users and the Wikimedia mode. You can feel free to explore the options we have discussed so far and don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or thoughts. And now let's move to um, our next point of access. Um, Marina, you have the mic. Thanks, Amal. Hi, everyone. I'm Marina. I'm going to talk a little bit how using all this feedback received from users, we're evolving the platform to move away from being a readers only app as it was in the past. And now we're working on improving the editing experience and more on the and support the with media movement more from a mobile perspective. Next slide, please. So we're going to take a look at a brief history of the apps over the years and how we're changing and evolving as always. Next slide, please. So at first, we were focused on a power reading experience that started back in 2012 and it was focused on bringing uh, discovery content and a great reading experience for everyone in any language. Then we moved on for, to micro contributions, starting to allow uh, article editing and article description, description editing, like slowly allowing new contributors and old contributors alike to edit from the apps. But then we moved on to support other ways that we interact with the movement, like on wiki communications in 2020 and new anti-vandalism tools just this year. Next slide, please. So starting from the beginning, we were focused only on reading. So we had like an explore feed and it was one of the main features for a long time. It was a way for uh, users to interact with the content was our version of the main page when you can find a featured article you can also find comments article a picture of the day and you can find for instance top read and random articles so ways to explore the content that had already been created next slide we also had the places um, explore options so you can find articles that are nearby to you from like if you have your location uh, services allowing the app to access where you are so you can find the results in your area you can zoom in the map and find content around you and uh, it's ios only for now like we used to have it on android but some technical challenges made us remove this uh, feature and we are working on having it back soon this is a, one of the most requested features. Uh, next slide. And reading lists. So reading lists is a way to curate your own content and save your favorite articles. And it allows, it allows 
allows you to save your articles for offline reading. So you can take it on the go, read offline on your flights or when you have low data, so you can always have your articles with you and they are saved across devices if you're logged in to never lose your reading list that is so carefully created. Uh, next slide, please. But what about editing, right? So you're all supposed to be allowed to edit Wikipedia regardless of your device of choice. But, and then we started uh, supporting this on the apps as well. The next slide. So we started with article editing from editing article descriptions and with a section editor, like full page editing is still a challenge for us uh, because of the way the API works with uh, the mobile endpoints. But we also have other limitations. For instance, a smaller screen, it's kind of hard to edit a lot of text in such a small screen, even though smartphones are getting bigger every year, basically. Uh, but we also don't have the visual editor. It doesn't work on the platforms in either iOS or Android. So we understand this is a challenge for newcomers. Like more experienced editors, they master wiki text. But if you're a newcomer, it can be a little scary and challenging to understand what all those brackets are. And we can have support for templates and some other advanced tools as now. But we start with, have to start from somewhere. So we started with this basic editing experience for uh, articles and article descriptions, and also a first version of talk pages for user pages and article talk pages. The next slide. But editing is much more than just editing articles or creating articles. It's also about communicating with the community and interacting with other users to curate the content and to help others, right? So uh, next slide. So we are working on on wiki communications. So it's a way for you to interact with the movement also on the platform. We started with notifications. You can get the notifications on your app and you can get a push notification if you allow your phone to receive them. So you can have like real time uh, updates on all the activity that you care about. Uh, next slide. We also improved the top pages experience. It used to be like a very simple list. You couldn't find that old picture of it, but the new experience is much more uh, platform appropriate. So it gives you all the tools for creating topics and responding. And we're always improving this experience to allow uh, for instance, images and other types of content um, on iOS really soon is to have some improvements to make. We're still iterating on this, but the new experience allows you to access archives in a better way and see other permanent links in a way that was not really possible before. Uh, next slide. And now we're working, starting to work on um, controller tools and anti-vandalism tasks on progress in both uh, in both platforms. And I'll go, we'll talk a little bit more in depth for you, but we'll see what we're working on right now as well in other fronts. Uh, next slide. So the future, like Amal also uh, mentioned how we build our roadmap and all the inputs we take in consideration from the foundation, from the community. So what's in our roadmap right now? Next slide. Um, just recapping, we pull from four buckets, like when you're thinking about what we're gonna tackle. So custom learning and discovery. Well, how can we help our users to find content and learn what's interesting to them? Quick but impactful contributions going to be our focus for this talk, since it's a lot to talk about, I decided to focus on contributions today. Uh, meaningful connections, like also related to the only key communications and all that work, but, and platform reliability, we need to make sure that whatever you are, regardless of what's going on, you can access the content and you can still be connected with uh, the movement. And next slide. 
So in progress, right now we have the patroller tools and antagonism tasks. It's in progress on both apps. And right now we're doing uh, watch lists on iOS. That's something that's super important for the most experienced editors. It's done in Android, but we're iterating on iOS. If you sign up for a newsletter as a mouse head, you'll be kept in the loop. Uh, suggested edits enhancements. We already have suggested edits as a more beginner uh, task for uh, newcomers, but it already uh, is working on Android. We're working on enhancements now. And edit entry, it was completely complete on in Android and it's in progress on iOS and edit entry we mean at allowing full article editing and having a platform native editor like used to be a web a web view on Android it is still a web view in iOS but we're working towards having a full uh, iOS native uh, editor in iOS but you can already find this enhanced uh, experience on Android. Next slide. And not started yet, but it's already on a roadmap, is suggested edit types for iOS. So it's another way to simulate new users to interact with the content, to start editing, created tasks, also a newcomer uh, editing experience that we want to add to the apps. And app donations, so for people that donate from mobile devices, we want to create a better experience for them to understand how donations are important, how they are used. So we're working on enhancing this experience and also positive reinforcement. How can we keep editors editing and happy? It's not started yet, but it's on a roadmap. And now uh, I'll pass the mic to Olga. Thank you so much, Marina. Um... Hi all, my name is Olga. I'm one of the designers on the apps team, primarily designing for iOS. And I'll be presenting a section, understanding the needs of mobile editors. So as Marina mentioned, I'll uh, go through some of the features that she mentioned in her section, but expand on them just a little bit. So community feedback and ideas guide our work. And over the last year, Marina mentioned that we've been working on and finishing up on making communications and also are currently working on anti-battleism tools and features. So why did we actually start working on Wiki Communication? Well, we had, as Marina mentioned, a request for editing features. So moving from primarily reader-focused to now editor-focused, uh, communication uh, became a big part to allow experienced editors to communicate uh, between one another and send each other messages and also get notified about them. So these features that I will uh, go through again are mainly adopted from the web experience, but altered to fit the mobile experience better. So as mentioned, notifications was a big part of it. Um, again, they work similarly as on web, except we can access notifications across all languages and projects on your device. So it's all on the same page and you pretty much filter through the languages that you have or the project that you have, but it's all located in one spot. And also for push notifications, the ability to receive kind of instant notifications about any new talk page message or edits made to a page that you're watching um, on your device uh, is, yeah, is available now. And then further, as mentioned, we have now native talk pages for both apps. Uh, this allows for kind of easy communication. Again, similar functionality. You can subscribe to different topics like on web, create topics, and uh, message, send messages on user talk and article talk pages. And as you see, it looks slightly different than on the web because we are also designing to ensure that the different features and apps uh, fit the platform kind of UI and, and designs. So we're always adopting that as well. And also, in addition, we've added edit notices alerts, and now you have access to like block messages, and people ha have the ability to see these messages displayed on their screen, as previously we did not have this ability. So that's finished up just this uh, in this past half a year. And now, 
two more of the work that we have ongoing. So this is not in the app yet, but will be soon. So this falls under, the, so Edit Patrol and Watchlist fall under anti-vandalism tools. And we had a request from community to ensure that edits are made, that the edits that are made in the apps are of good quality. And also we've had um, community to ask for moderation tools that don't have preference for one specific language. So I'll be talking first about the Edit Patrol. As Marina mentioned, we are going to first have it on Android, hopefully released uh, relatively soon, and then we'll adopt it also on iOS. And this is uh, heavily inspired by all the different extensions and tools that we currently have on web to help uh, patrollers uh, review edits. So similarly to on web, it will allow people to review edits in their app. And there's a stream of edits from recent changes that you can tap on. Um, as you see here in this kind of GIF, you can filter again through different languages. So you'll have access, if you do patrol in different languages, you have access to switch the, the, the recent edits into the recent changes into those languages. And then once you get to the diff view, you're able to either, here it is, either thank uh, the editor for the contributions, undo or roll back the edit if you have the appropriate privileges and rights, watch the page or warn editors uh, by sending them a talk message. And in this feature, you're able to also save those warning messages into the app so you can reuse them later and don't have to retype the warning messages over and over again. And also, as mentioned, we're gonna we're bringing a watch list to iOS. We do currently have watch lists on Android, and this again allows us to uh, choose the different languages or a specific language that you're interested in, and also review your watch list pages from that wiki language. And from once you tap on the diff, as you see here, you can also undo uh, the contribution or roll back again if you have the appropriate privileges. And yeah. And so both of these features are here to aid experienced editors to track and review edits and hopefully improve also the quality of edits. And as we're moving into this world of, of more editor focused features, we'll be, we are doing a lot of research. Um, and so this is a quote that I found that I found <laughs> it's kind of appropriate for at least the work that I do. So it says, research is what I'm doing when I don't know what I'm doing. So when looking at existing kind of community wishes and needs, and then also existing apps and extension, or sorry, exen existing desktop extensions and tools and features, and then also thinking of how to adapt that to on a mobile phone and to a small screen size and make it easy also for new ex editors and experienced editors to use and support existing editor, uh, experience editor workflows. We do a lot of research. We are reaching out to community more and more to ask for their input, for to run usability tests, to understand if the designs and if the research that we do is actually appropriate for their needs. So um, if you're interested in participating or following our work or actually participating in the tests and surveys that we have, feel free to email me um, at the email you see here. So it's otichnova.wikimedia.org. We're always looking for volunteers to test this. Um, also, feel free to follow us on our Media Wiki page and our project page. There's updates there very frequently. Also, if you haven't downloaded the app yet, um, feel free to do that either in the Google Play or App Store and test it out and send us our feedback on any of the support emails. This is uh, highly sought out right now. And again, as we're moving into more of editor focus, we really appreciate uh, people coming in and, and leaving their feedback and requests. So on the behalf of the apps team, thank you so much for coming and watching us talk about apps. And, and yeah, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask them us now. We have, I think, a couple of minutes. So yeah, thank you so much. Is there any Is there questions? questions? No, there's no, no there's questions. questions. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. In the chat, okay, I'm here. Uh, I'm gonna.
read it out loud. Shamal has a question. I have enjoyed the Sparkline feature on the Wikipedia mobile app. I wonder if it might be nice to have it for articles on my watch list. It will help me improve content that is getting traction and which I typically would know or have interest in. So for watch lists on Android, we have them. If you use Android, you'll be you are able to access watch lists fully functioning as you would in desktop web or mobile web just with a nice uh, UI for Android. And we're working on it for iOS. Still not available, we're constructing it as we speak. But um, then you would able, be able to watch articles exactly as you can on the web. Okay. okay. Uh -uh. So hello, so hello from, from Singapore, Singapore and the, and the own site. site. So, so I, just I just have very, very quick, quick questions, questions about, about like the, the, is the I, I, just I just saw the Pandas is picture, which is implemented, implemented on the iOS application. application. So it's it's going to plan, plan to implement, to implement it, it on, on mobile, mobile app as well. As well. I mean, I mean not mobile, mobile app, sorry, sorry mobile, mobile web. web. Um, currently, we there'll be other moderation tools, I think, implemented on mobile web, but currently this version of the patrol, kind of edit patrol tool, is thought to be um, first on Android, then iOS. And we are communicating with uh, people from mobile web, but um, I think there's actually a talk that they have later today on moderation tools specifically, so if you want to go listen to that. Uh, yeah. Hello. 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 Um, I'm, I'm one, one of the, the volunteers, volunteers who developed the, develop the, the Commons, Commons Android, Android app. app. And, and we try, we try to, to keep, keep supporting, supporting all, all devices. devices. And, and, and I, I think, think that's, that's true, true for, for the uh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia app too. too. And, and uh, in, in fact, fact, I think, I think it has, has even better. better. Even, even uh, I mean, I mean support support even all the devices. devices. And, and we, we have, have hypothesized that, that, that all the Android, Android devices, devices are used in underrepresented regions, regions of the world. world. And do you think that's, that's true? true? And, and do you have, have data, data like, like that? that? So I can participate in answering this question because um, I was attending the meeting that uh, we had during this year at the first quarter, quarter I guess, with the um, Commons volunteers um, who were are working on developing the app as you explained with um, Nicholas and um, Kartik, as I Kartik, as I can remember. So we're actually working and supporting them, uh, especially from our uh, software engineers and then the Android team, because they have history in helping the commons guys and doing their work. So we're here all the time supporting and having that back, especially when it comes to the stuff that you need uh, with the um, uh, uh, the the uh, play store uh, stuff and um, making sure that the app will uh, be there and remain there for downloads and for the second point that you mentioned that's rated for the um, uh, underrepresented um, uh, areas that use the app actually um, a huge part of our work um now is like dedicated to how we can sustain 
um, the usage of our applications in these areas that can cause or can suffer from bad internet connection, stable internet connection, or even um, an older um, Android devices, as you mentioned. So what we can do here is that you can um, follow our uh, pages for the announcement of the next office hour that will probably take place in the next October and maintain this point as a main point that we can discuss in order to be taken into consideration for further details in the next period and the next plans that we're working on. And the second uh, point is that um, you can discuss with the um, volunteer engineers who are working on the commons uh, app and that you just um, like have a specific uh, step on what you want to do in order to help these users from the underrepresented areas, as you mentioned, and we can have our own meeting to discuss what we can do in order to uplift the usage and this point. I don't know if this like uh, answered your questions or maybe if you need any more clarification, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. Very, Very glad, glad to hear that. More than welcome, we're here to help. So do you have any other questions that we can answer? Suggestions or even feature requests that you would like to see? So I think, I think this is like, this is it. And uh, we have shown you how you can reach out to us. We're listening to your inquiries, thoughts and suggestions all the time. Uh, myself and my colleagues, we were so happy to be with you here today, and we'll, we're looking for forward the communication that we can um, collaborate and uh, uplift the usage of our Wikipedia app so that it can be exactly as you would like your user experience to be. Thank you so much for being here today and looking forward to hear from you all.